Drenont here. This is Case Blue and Gadarian Splits Creek 2. Just want to do an update on the movement and mode determination phase. The uh, This is taking maybe longer than the uh, entire reinforcement phase, which makes sense because this is the whole meat of the turn. And by takes longer, I mean the first map and a half's worth of 16. Though we're really not going through all 16 maps, just more like one, two, three, about four, five. I've spent about a couple hours playing so far. Um, so any space, so let's talk about how I'm keeping track of this. The green cylinders and cones are areas I have not done yet. The You can see that there's a lot of them left, but if you see over here, I have done about three cones worth, maybe four, of uh, stuff. I have my dice bowl here in uh, areas that there's not much stuff going on in. I've been rolling that a lot. Um, I've been using some aircraft. If you notice these little cards, um, I already have some aircraft in the inactive spots. And these tie to aircraft on the map. These yellow cubes represent air bases that have aircraft that need to be refitted later. And let's talk about the various uh, groupings that are done here. So I've put some cavalry in reserve right here, some SS cavalry. The blue markers are for reserves, so I don't forget that I can use them. Um, same with this. These reserve markers are kind of more for defensive stuff, if I recall. Like uh, during, if the other player does stuff on their turn, I can react to it temporarily. Um, so I fueled the SST thing, didn't really need it, so that's a shame. But um, tried to do some combat up here and uh, with these guys. And I managed to get a hit, and then I had to take a loss here, but I made these guys take a loss with uh, this group. The SST's just sitting here, not sure why I did anything with them. I feel bad. Oh, I think they had to retreat or something. I don't know. Well, well let's not worry about it too much. Anyways, combat here was pretty straightforward. I did this. Might have tried an advance here and it failed. I think, no, and I um, advanced this guy into here. I think that was a attack. Move these guys forward a little bit. Uh, one thing I've taken it, but yeah, I, uh, I recorded this one, so never mind. So let's talk about this front here. Um, I did a lot of what's called hip shoots, which is aircraft can fire during this movement part. If um, there's pieces that have, that have finished their move, I can send a single bomber to just bomb stuff. Um, had a pretty good success here. Uh, drove some guys, drove the, some guys away, especially this dude. He made this guy retreat two space. He made this guy retreat two spaces. Um, this guy, I think, managed to drive this guy away, or at least take some damage, but at, at some trade. Um, this didn't go as well. Um, didn't get too much fight here, had to retreat, and I left a breakdown just in case. Um, so, this part is what I've been spending the bulk of the turn doing since I last left off. Put a lot of units in reserve, some here, stacks here. Uh, basically, there was a lot of Germans right here, and now they're gone. And I've taken out a headquarters, and then I drove a guy up here and took out another headquarters. Drew some guys up here. Uh, basically doing what's called overrun attacks. Pierce this line through. Overrun attacks, what they do is um, you can attack and still move. And so it's um, normally you have to wait till a combat phase. So I'm not going after these guys with the ones over them. Those are hedgehog defended groups, a hedgehog being like minefields and barricades and stuff, impromptu things. And uh, that would be hard to fight through, so I'm not going through that. 
had a really tricky supply situation with all of this. These little uh, tile spacers right here indicate supply stacks. And uh, let's see what we have to talk about. I basically went through something like five or six supply points, which is a lot. Uh, every time I use one of these 24-3 stacks, that's four, a whole supply point uh, because each... Uh, normally it takes one token for each piece, but these units count as four times as many pieces, as or four pieces at once. Uh, had some drawbacks, but mostly had some pretty successful stuff. Um, some guys had to retreat, but ultimately good attack. Um, namely this uh, yellow V right here was trying to take this thing that said DG on it but failed and had to retreat a space, but it worked out okay. Actually, I think that guy's DG because he retreated into a zone of control spot, so I'll mark that in a second. And, uh, yeah, I managed to keep everything in supply. Um, these reserve units are going to move forward and pierce the lines at the end of the turn. Um, I advanced a railhead right here. Um, so this double railhead can get even farther down. Um, I'm worried about um, one of these stacks, I think up here, yeah. Uh, that little airplane has a headquarters under it and um, it doesn't really have anything defending it, so if people go after it, it could be pretty deadly for them if the Russians try to take it. So, this, this was a lot of fighting right here, even though it was still only the movement phase. Um, I'll get back to you on what the other stuff is going to be like. So, I've finished the Gadurian's Blitzkrieg 2's map section of this giant game for the first turn of the first player. <laughs> and so uh, what that means is I've done this front essentially, but all these little, but this map um, up here still needs to be done. So what I left here um, I was talking about this section, now we're on to here. Um, well, I would talk about that section here. First off, not too much advancing on the Axis side. I fueled uh, the 19th Panzer, tried to break in to the lines. Managed to at least disorganize the the Russians there disorganized. That DG stands for disorganized, and that essentially halves their battle values. Put some people in reserve back here, hopefully to just um, maybe move them forward. Forget what I was doing there. Probably do a combat phase there. You have a lot of units in reserve, uh, though all those blue cubes are reserve markers. Now, more interestingly, I made a lot of progress here and knocked over a piece. I should probably fix that. Um, Oh, poor headquarters there. So what I did was, um, well, first off, I did so much attacks and stuff on this movement phase, I didn't have enough uh, fuel left to fuel the 20th Panzer and the SSR div uh, divisions. So that's very sad. Um, I only have, like, uh, less than one supply point in that um, stack right there. But you can see that there's this line of units, and that's the axis piercing through the front uh, that these Russians set up. Really good fights there on the axis side. Uh, in addition, I pierced around, and so I have this little pincer going where the where we have uh, the 9th Panzer, right? No, the 5th Panzer advancing this way, and that way, and uh, another Panzer division. Let's see which one this is. The 2nd. The 2nd is also advancing up this front. 
I actually have a lot of reserve markers there. Uh, a couple are under um, the, that 8-0 headquarters and that breakdown. So essentially I'm going to try to advance these fronts. That's from what I gather how the Axis play. They, ha they stretch into the battlefield and eventually they'll have to use truck extenders. There's not enough time to just try to make safe supply lines. So it's kind of like this aggressive defense that they have to set up. Their goal eventually, hopefully they can reach here and then eventually get all the way to Moscow. But they still obviously have a long road to go. We've basically just, that's as far as any of my uh, troops have gotten on the Axis side. Didn't do much on this front, just keeping it safe because there's not really much tokens left to manipulate there. Um, I did move a little bit of the cavalry here. Uh, these, these yellow stripes are the 1st Cavalry Division. And essentially I pushed a um, larger infantry division forward and then I kind of shifted everybody up one hex. So they're kind of going to try to go north and then maybe penetrate Briansk up there. Down here I had some interesting stuff go on. The uh, basically annihilation of uh, the front right there. The 29th Motorized Division is right here and they managed to take a town. Uh, the 7th, a bunch of divisions, 17th Panzer, 18th Panzer, the 20th Motorized, no the 10th Motorized are all going up there and there's some in reserve. They're going to go even farther once they finish the supply phase which comes after the movement phase and essentially what's going to happen is while I have I don't have to check supply in the reserve phase so I can just extend my units even farther and they're going to try to take that town just get all the way forward and then I didn't really do much over here I advanced the 25th motorized to this front maybe might have some battles up here uh, at the after the movement phase so we have a line pushing that way and a pincer right there, and kind of just a stalemate right there. And that's the Gadurian Blitzkrieg side of the map. I finished the movement phase for the first side on turn one. This is a long game. So, last well, so, so uh, on, I finished the Case Blue map. Uh, it actually took a lot quicker than the Gadurian Blitzkrieg 2. I think that has to do with counter density and also supply. So you can see, so this is a Gadurian Blitzkrieg 2 map about here. It ends right around here. And you can see that the counter density is pretty thick all the way through. Just kind of keeps going. But once you reach Case Blue, there's this segment here, but otherwise is pretty sparse. And so that really didn't take nearly as long as I was afraid it would. Still took like a couple hours, geez. But let's talk about what happened. Uh, I left off with the 25th motorized, and they're kind of ready to attack in the combat phase. I've put little red cubes down for where I'm going to plan on combat in the combat phase. I actually have not fueled the 15th, the 16th motorized, but that's okay. I can still attack with them in the combat phase. There's a, just enough supply points maybe to get something through there. Then uh, over here, I'm a little supply starved, but uh, so I only moved a bunch of leg units. I didn't really fuel um, too many of, I think, the 13th Panzers down there. And again, the tile spacers are marking where all of the uh, supply points are. Actually, I used this headquarters to be able to fuel all the truck and track units. So... What's going on here is that I didn't really do any actual attacks. I think I may have fought right here where that 558 is. 
uh, right next to the headquarters in that cube. And I'm basically going to try to push in the combat phase. I also set up a lot of units in reserve. Uh, so I'll get to that in a second. Over here is a little weird. Um, so I actually did attacks here. Oh yes, the 16th and 14th Panzers started with no fuel at all and don't have any fuel still. So I'm going to put some supply points on them next turn when I get a chance. Uh, now here we had a little bit of um, breaking a front. The 16th Panzer, I think, uh, managed to take a supply point. They were right next to it and it was open field, so it was just like, yeah, let's go for this. And they made the troops defending it retreat with a... They didn't take too many losses, but they still had to retreat from a hex. They're in a town now, though, so it'll be harder to t fight them next, but still. So I have a really annoying thing here. The map A for uh, the case blue set and map B, you can see that it's jutted out, and so I, um, so essentially this map is off by a little bit. Essentially it's t to the left one hex, so that makes parsing this information a little bit wonkier than it should be. So I'm just going to have to finagle that part. Uh, it's already covered in some pretty heavy duty plexiglass. Like, seriously. Um, and that makes it really weighty to try to... Trying to rejigger it is going to be kind of impossible. It was hard enough without all the pieces on it. Oh boy, I don't know how people manage to line it up right normally. Maybe they use like some soft adhesive or something that doesn't hurt the map. Either way. Um, so that front kind of is going to be a thing. I might actually have some combat there. So I'm going to put a cube on that. Whoop. But no combat here. I didn't want to... These guys have a pretty big river. The That blue word is the river name. I'm not going to pronounce it. So... They ha they're defending a river point, and frankly, I don't want to try to push the front lines here without heavy supply and stuff, and uh, better units. The Romanians right here, um, I advanced the infantry that are sitting right here. They're mountain infantry, actually. You can tell because, so fun NATO simple fact, that little X indicates they're an infantry, and then that little uh, jutting triangle below the X, at the bottom of the X indicates they're mountain infantry. NATO symbols are fun. So, it doesn't really have a gameplay effect in this game, but it's just, it's flavor, I guess. So they advance that way a little bit uh, onto the road. I also advance farther the um, headquarter here, the mountain headquarters, I think. Now it's interesting, they actually have leg mo um they, oh, I didn't advance them at all, sorry. But what they do that's weird enough... No, oh, I did flip them. What am I talking about? So that 5 right there is white when it should be, when normally it's a black number. And that's because these guys um, throw their supplies using leg movement, which means they don't are not affected by enemy zone of control when um, sending supplies to nearby units. Um... I didn't move... So over here I have people pushing towards the front lines a lot. I also have... Um, so I took a... They all spawned at this hex right here. And... So now they're going farther and farther and farther and farther up. I'm going to have to look up reinforcements rules. I noticed that uh, there's some re weird rules about where units can spawn versus where their supply points are. So... I'll see if I can get that right. I don't think I messed it up too much on this first turn. I haven't used a lot of aircraft um, down here. There's a holding box for them somewhere. Yeah, here. You can Now this is supposed to represent the corner of the map that's not in play. 
and you can see there's a bunch of aircraft lined up the, in the active section. They're all ready to fly. So I'm going to do some bar uh, barrages with them after this. Uh, that's the tip end of the movement segment. After you finish moving your units, the aircraft can do their bombings. So what's happened here? Uh, basically, there's no combat here. Uh, these guys are too far out from supply lines. And um, there's just, I don't trust the strength of the units here. So instead, I'm just positioning them in ways that I think will work. Over here is a little tricky because these guys got both sides of a river here. So I'm not sure how I'm going to approach that. Probably once I get more troops up to the front there and hopefully they can hold out okay. We'll see. You can notice that everything is under reserve markers right now. And I'll get to why in a second. Down here I didn't do any combat. I have a red marker indicating I'm going to do some combat during the combat phase. It'll be tricky because everybody's under some hedgehogs here. Um, and that's the extent of the German units. So I actually had like uh, at least a dozen or more reserve markers left. So I just kind of piled them on in places and I'm ju just going to remove them if they're not useful at the end of the turn. Um, I'm going to just release them in the exploit phase. So these red cubes indicate some combat that's going to happen. I'm going to barrage some stuff and then I'm going to go into the supply phase and tell you how that works out.